So as part of the hypermodeling profile, I added some validation suites. So in the past, I've created generic tables that were filtered in such a way that they would only display elements that uh, violated some of the rules I was establishing. But it's uh, very efficient to also create validation suites that uh, identify elements that don't pass these tests. And so I'm going to show how to create a validation suite for yourself. So one of the things I did is I created a package here for the hypermodel validation suite. And basically every validation rule is simply a constraint that has the validation rule stereotype applied. And so I chose not to make these active validation rules. I didn't want them to run all the time, but I wanted them to run on demand. And you can do that by going to the Analyze uh, selection, Validation, and Validate. And here's where you can pick the validation suite. In this case, this would be the Hypermodel validation suite. Uh, so there, it collects all the rules that are in that package. So if we look at um, what happens in the specification window, once the validation rule stereotype is applied. You'll see there's an abbreviation uh, where you can apply a, a short name for the validation rule. There's an error message that's displayed, and then you can also pick the severity of the um, error. So most, most of these I just set as error. And so uh, I describe what the error message is, I describe what the severity is, and I give it a name. The next step in applying or creating the validation rule is to pick the constrained element. So in this case, i have applying these to capabilities. So you have to spell out what the rules apply to. So in this case, it's the capability. And then the specification is where you spell out uh, how it uh, is tested. And so the intent here is to return a Boolean that's either a true or a false. So if it's true, it passes the test. If it's false, it fails. So in this case, what we've done is we've gone in here and there's a type test that's running and we're basically searching the um, capability. In this case, we're round tripping it. Uh, we're going from capability to an owned comment and then from the comment back to the owner. So if it's able to successfully complete that round trip, it means it's documented. And so uh, is, if we do a type test against the capability, it will pass. And so uh, if it's able to successfully complete that round trip, it passes. If, it, if the round trip is broken, it fails. Now there's also another way to handle this. Uh, there is the, let me find a, an example here, um, for use cases. So again, I applied this to use case and there's several sub types, the capability, the goal, the objective, our customizations. And in that case, I used a new feature here in 19, which is the if then else. And so you can access that by the operation from model choice here. And you'll see that there is, uh, there's the if then else conditional. So they've added a variety of new conditionals. We'll talk about more of those in other videos, but this is the if then else. So in this case, if, um, we want the applied stereotype to be empty. So is empty is another um, test that's now available. So basically, if there is no stereotype applied to the use case, then we do this is empty, and we're checking the documentation. So if the documentation is empty, that would be true, and then we apply the not to it, uh, which is another conditional or, or operator that was provided in 19. So that flips the... Uh, true to a false because if it's empty we want it to fail and then otherwise it's true so this is a case of us using several new features in the 19 choices uh, to allow us to return uh, the appropriate validation rule so there's the if then else that we're using uh, there's the condition is empty and there's the not and so this is a case of me stacking up several of these operators and when this runs it will uh, return an, uh, an error if there are use cases that aren't documented Let's look at another one here. Here's a case of interface blocks. I've decided interface blocks have to own a flow property. And so in that particular case, if we look at this, we've constrained the interface block and we put a not on here. And basically what we're doing, we're doing an is empty test and we're looking for members, which again is the structured expression that returns everything that the interface block owns and we're basically filtering by flow property. So if the interface block has a flow property, if that's empty, uh, it's a true, and then we apply the not to make it a false. 
So again, uh, a lot of the trick to this is being able to see how the logic fits in your head and being able to understand what you're testing for to make it work correctly. So I'll be posting uh, the entire hypermodel validation suite as part of the update to the profile. Uh, we're checking for things here like our pins connected, um, our transitions triggered. Um, so here's a case of the transition trigger. We have an or in here because we don't want to uh, have an issue if you're coming out of a history or initial node. Uh, those should flow directly. And so the logic in this one is an or. So um, if you're there's there's some more complicated logic here that if you have a trigger that's empty um, that flips it and then we have a type test here for the transition that uh, it basically returns a true uh, if you come out of a connection point or if you come out of a pseudo state so if either of those you're true or uh, if you are not empty and so this is the correct logic to throw an error if you have a normal quote unquote routine transition in a state machine that doesn't have a trigger. And so again, uh, a lot of the trick is to develop the rule, run it, make sure that it's applying the logic correctly, do a lot of manual checking to make sure that you have your logic consistent. So I'll be releasing this and uh, we'll do an in-depth uh, video uh, in the future showing how we build some of these from scratch as well. Thanks and have a great day.